Hey guys, it's Jim. Thanks for tuning in and coming back. I appreciate it. And today I'm going to do a Luminar workflow video. I realized I hadn't done a workflow video in a little while and they're kind of fun because I just kind of walk through a photo as opposed to talking about a specific idea or concept or filter or just sort of do a little workflow business and uh, have fun with it and share, uh, share with you what it is I do to images. And so in this case, I'm going to go ahead and start with this photo. Let me show you. There it is. That's a shot from London. I shared that recently on Facebook or something. Uh, anyway, so you may have seen it before, but it didn't look like that. It looked like that. And so it's a big difference. And in fact, uh, that I might have looked at it and thought, eh, it's kind of dark, kind of not so great. I don't really think I'd edit it. I might actually would have passed by it. Uh, but that's the beauty of Luminar is you can sort of, you know, save an otherwise uh, uninteresting photo and turn it into something that uh, you may like. And that's what I've done here. Now, I don't know if you like it, but I like it. And so I'm going to talk about that. So um, let me go ahead and turn off all the filters and then we'll hop into the editing. So one second. Okay, so um, now here I am. Uh, let me show you. I've got a number of filters that I'm, I've used in this photo. Um, I've got my histogram. I don't need layers. I'm not even going to use them. I don't need information. Uh, it was at F16 according to this. So great. Um, I'll tell you what I was doing. I was firing brackets, which I do all the time. And um, I saw a bus coming, so I set it up so that hopefully one of my exposures would be kind of long and catch the bus, bur bus blurring by. It's a double-decker bus in London. Um, I guess I didn't say that. Um, and so I, uh, that was what I went for, and that's kind of what I got. Now, I don't always recommend trying to fire brackets and time it. I was actually already in um, auto bracketing, so I was already firing brackets, and I saw the bus coming, and I didn't feel like I was going to have time to switch over to manual and just do a regular long exposure. Uh, but that might be a better way to do that, so you could actually get more of a streak. Uh, it was kind of dark, so you know um, you probably don't need a filter for that. It just really depends. And so what I usually do is tighten up the aperture. So in this case, I was f16, but I could have done a single exposure, maybe at f22 or something, without bracketing, just a single exposure, and maybe gotten a little bit more blur. But I was happy with what I got, considering I was bracketing and kind of like, oh my god, here comes a bus, I gotta get it. So. I'm usually operating like that. Um, I like to think I always have a plan. I don't always have a plan. Um, so the first filter I use is develop. Uh, this is not a raw file. I started in Lightroom and usually what I do is I move a 16-bit TIFF over from Lightroom to Luminar. And so that's what I did. And then when I got it all done, uh, before hitting apply and sending it back to my Lightroom library, I hit save. And so as you can see, this is a LMNR file, a native Luminar file. And to get that, you just say file save and then uh, you can save all your your history and all that stuff so that's what i did okay so the first thing i did here is i adjusted the white balance let me show you I, I'm, that's what it looked like right so i was at uh, negative what 30 and and uh, think over here or negative 40. um i forgot now i think it was negative 40. and for me it, it was just let me go back way too yellow um yellow is a fine color in a sunset for me city streets especially at night there's always a lot of yellow because of these kind of lights i don't like yellow for that so i always change that color and the first thing i do is take the temperature and do something like that and then generally what i do is take the tint and go the other way and i think i was at about 10. so you can kind of see what it's doing there um, i also bumped up the exposure because that's what it looked like beforehand and i just needed to get a brighter photo so i went something like that i actually don't remember the number I was at. So let's go with that. Um, and of course, I added contrast. Also bumped up, also bumped up the shadows and the whites a little bit. And then I gave clarity a pretty major boost. And so the base file was like that, fairly dark, kind of yellowy. And now it's much brighter because of the exposure slider. Clarity helps a little bit, um, just giving it definition and a little bit more oomph. And then of course, the temperature and tint adjustments, which I think help quite a bit. So I think we're getting there. The next thing I did, and by the way, um, a quick aside, I used to always add filters, and then uh, as I was walking through it, I would be dragging the sliders, and it got to be almost a little distracting for me, and I imagine for you as a viewer, um, because I was trying to get the slider to the right place and looking at my notes, and I don't really think that you care where the slider is, like, hey, he went to 36 on saturation, great, right? So nobody cares that I went to 36. I think what you hope, I think, I'm talking to myself here kind of, but I'm talking to you, and that is, so let me know in the comments if you would. I think what you really care about is why did he do that and why is he using that filter for that sort of thing and all that. So what I've been doing in the last few videos 
is already having my photo made, and then walking through each filter as I turn it on and talk about the why, and I hope that helps. Um, to me, it's cleaner, easier. I can be more engaged uh, with you in this conversation we're having and less concerned with me having to drag sliders. So quick aside there, I hope you like it. Let me know in the comments. Anyway, the next slider that I, or filter that I used was saturation and vibrance. And I think you can see that's a fairly significant shift. Let me show you one more time. There's the before, right? Kind of muted colors. And there's the after, a bit more vibrant um, and saturated because I use saturation and vibrance. So the thing I like about, like about vibrance is it bumps up some of the non-primary colors, some of the less dominant colors and gives them a bit more oomph. So I think it makes the scene a lot more richer uh, when you use vibrance. And many times um, I will just use vibrance and not saturation at all. I don't want to overdo the intensity of all the colors, which is what saturation has a tendency to do, but vibrance doesn't. It really just helps bump up the other stuff kind of, and I think it makes an improvement. So I think we're getting there and I'm liking what I'm having so far. And then this is where I wanted to get into some fine tuning. And so that's next. Okay, HSL. So hue, I didn't touch. Saturation, I didn't touch. Luminance, I bumped up the red and the blue. So let me show you the before. If you look at the red and the blue, the red's kind of on the bus, kind of on the wall, and definitely in the sky. And the after, the luminance is just the, the light value or exposure value of those colors. And so all I really did is I brightened the blue and the red. That's all it was. Part of it is because there's so much blue in the sky, but when, I, when it's not uh, increased luminance, it's just kind of darker. And I wanted a little bit richer sky because I just like blue skies. It's not a big shift, but a small one. Um, and then this is where I kind of get into the fun stuff. And this is split toning. And I think you can tell there, that was a pretty big difference. Here's the before, before split toning and after. There's a little bit more blue tint. So what I did, if you haven't used split toning, it takes the highlights and the shadows, it separates them. And uh, you choose a color and, and, and a saturation amount or intensity for that color, right? So for highlights, I chose a little bit of a yellow because I was bringing up some of the colors here in this bus and in that street light. And then for the shadows, I choose, uh, chose kind of a blue and you know I bumped those up a little bit. Now you can go really blue, uh, but I don't wanna go crazy, right? I think I was around 30. And so I like it because I think it's giving it a little bit more of that bluish um, kind of feel. And I like that. Again, that's personal preference. It doesn't have to look like that. It's just the look that I like because like the before, if, if you can tell, and you probably remember a few filters ago, it was really orangey yellow looking. And you can kind of tell there in the before, and now we're getting a lot more bluer and a little bit of that kind of purple pink that came from this tint adjustment up there. Again, personal preference. Um, that's what I did there. And then I went to HSL. So you remember I had HSL up here just to brighten the luminance for the red and the blue, but you can do this. You can add the same filter again and again if you want to on the same layer to make different adjustments. And that's the beauty of the masking uh, that you have in Luminar, the filter masking. So you can mask a specific filter into a specific part of the photo. So what did I do here? All I did is if you look at these street lights, this first one's really yellowy, but all the rest are kind of blue. Um, and I, I'm gonna be honest, I don't really remember what they look like. If you turn this off, uh, the first one looks really yellow and the other ones look kind of white. But with my other adjustments in the shadows up here and my temperature, they're getting kind of blue. So all I did is I went into HSL and I took the blue saturation down and I masked it in. Let me show you. Let me just show you the mask. I just took the, uh, the blue saturation down negative 23, right? The number's kind of immaterial. Um, and I just painted it into the photo right there. And then I said, I'm done. So all that did, and in fact, I could actually come in here and do it a little bit more if I wanted to, to take a little bit more of that blue out because as much as I like blue kind of on the edges with the shadow, the street lights aren't blue. Everybody knows that. So um, they're definitely either kind of a clear or white or sometimes that yellowy, and sometimes they get kind of a real orange look, but I really have never seen them blue. So I don't want them blue. Um, I like my colors, but I don't really want to put a whole lot of color if it doesn't fit like visually. So that's what I did there. And then really my last thing was, um, I said, you know what I really want to do is add a vignette. Um, actually, that's not true. The other thing I wanted to do is add a crop. So I shot this, I think at 16, uh, sorry, uh, 20 millimeters. So I had my wide angle lens. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. My wide angle lens. And um, I shoot that a lot with street scenes because I'm trying to get a lot in, and which is good and bad, right? Um, so 
With a wide angle lens though, it just, obviously it's wide, so you capture a lot of stuff. 20 millimeters is fairly wide on a full frame camera. So for me, I look at the photo, and I love the, bu the bus, you know, kind of brushing pa or blurring past. I love the gentle curve of the street and the lights that sort of, you can kind of see how the lights are dotting down and sort of following the curve of the road. I love that. I love it says Cafe Rouge over here, and you can kind of see in the restaurant. It almost looks HDR, but it's not. It just, you know, the camera captures a lot these days, and so therefore, I don't always edit uh, with HDR even when I fire brackets. But anyway, what I'm saying is I've got a lot of foreground, and I don't really need a lot of it. I love the curve of this yellow uh, paint here, but I don't really like the extra foreground. So I go into the Crop Tool, and I'm going to keep my aspect ratio of 3 to 2. So that's where it is. And I'm just going to come in here, and I'm going to crop this a little bit. And all I'm doing is getting rid of a lot of that foreground. And now the first thing you're going to say is, hey, Jim, you're also losing some of that light on the bus, uh, some of the, the blur of the bus. And you're right, I am. I might would scoot a little bit over just to get a little bit more of that light. And the truth is the far left of the frame is just the edge of the building where it says Cafe Rouge. I definitely want the sign there and the edge of that window because cutting it off like uh, that would you know look weird. Number one, you never want to cut out a sign um, because I think that you know, it would just look weird if it said, you know, uh, Afe Rouge instead of Cafe Rouge or whatever. So, you know, cutting out a little bit of it is fine, but I think with a window, you want to leave some of that. That kind of helps anchor it because also if you leave like that, you're going to say, well, they cut off the window. It just looks weird. So I would leave it like that. Cut off a little bit of the building, but you want some of that anchor. You definitely want the text. But, um, and I gain back a tiny bit of the, um, uh, the bus, uh, but I'm keeping the same aspect ratio. I could also say free, and then I could just move this over here and get all of that and make it a little bit more panoramic, and that, that actually looks pretty cool too. My point is with the wide angle lens, you end up with more foreground than you may care to have, which I did in this case. It didn't really add anything to the photo, so I came in and just cropped it out, but I like the gentle curve of that yellow line that's painted on the side. So I'm gonna go with the free crop here, and I'm gonna say apply crop, and then I'm gonna go add vignette. So vignette, I just came in here, and all I did is darken the edges. I dropped the size a little bit. I'm gonna drop it a little bit more, and I added a little inner light. So vignette obviously is designed to direct the attention of the viewer towards whatever, whatever it is. The good news is you can place the center anywhere you want. I could say, hey, there's the center of the vignette. Or I could say, hey, there's the center of the vignette. That actually looks kind of good. Um, but you know, I think I'm gonna stick kind of in the center. What I really like is the reflection of the lights on the pavement. I think that looks good. There's a natural shadow there from the, the building and these people are walking by. And so I think that looks good. Let me show you without the vignette. To me, it's a little too bright now that I see it without the vignette. And I think it does a lot a better job uh, helping sort of control my view. And that's what I would do to the photo. So let me show you the before and after. There's a before, and that was um, the same crop as I've already made. Once you've cropped it, and when you hit before and after, it's not going to show you the before crop. You're only going to see the after crop, but all the edits are gone. So there's the before, and there's the after. Very different. And let me show you the sliding uh, before after, right? Which is always fun to look at. Um, you can see, I mean, massive difference in colors. And really, I didn't use color balance. I didn't use a lot of the filters that I use to play with colors. Uh, I got a lot of that out of split toning, some HSL work, and of course, saturation vibrance bumped it up a little bit. But that's it, my friends. One more time. Here's a before. There's the after. I hope this helped. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. And uh, tell your friends about it, share it, you know, leave a comment. Give me a thumbs up if you like the uh, video. And I'll do more like this. I'll be back as soon as I can with more stuff. And have a great day. Thanks for watching. See you next time, my friends, and adios.